In this video, I will show you how to edit like Cleo Abram and we'll create this really cool 3D Concorde airplane. A lot of our edits are done by Justin Poor and I actually love his work. We're gonna use Blender and before we jump into it, if you want to become a better editor and learn more about Blender, then do join the Social Creator Club Pro. In this exclusive editing community, you will learn advanced editing techniques. I also sometimes drop some potential clients in there. You will learn how to get clients yourself and there's of course a community that really wants to help out. Link for this is in the description, so do check that out and then let's jump into it. So I have Blender open and this is just a general project. We're gonna delete this cube first by selecting this cube and then pressing X, press delete. Now I already found this beautiful 3D model by Thomas333 and credits to Boomerang. And by the way, what the, what is this? <laughs> anyway, if you're in the pro community, you will get the project file, including the assets. But even if you're in the free community, you can still get the assets. I'm gonna import this model. I'm just gonna drag this Blender model in and press append. And then we can go to object. And we see actually a lot of objects. It's sometimes a bit hard to know what to import. So I'm just gonna click on the first one and scroll down and then hold shift and click on the last one. So we have them all selected and then I'm gonna press append and that will just add all the objects. Now it is quite huge, but I think it's quite true to scale. I'm using a mouse and now I click the middle mouse button to orbit around and look at that beautiful model, I love it. I don't know why, but as a kid, I love these planes. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the move tool because I'm going to move it up a bit. I'm just going to make sure that this is basically on the ground. So let's see. And there are ways to snap it, but I actually want to do this manually because I see that it's not perfectly aligned. I think this should do. We can always change this up a bit later. I'm going to create the scene first and I'm going to add a normal plane. So just go to add mesh and then plane. That's our normal plane. And we can just go to the scale tool or you can press S to scale it up and zoom out a bit and let's scale it more. And maybe let's scale it up like this, just so it's a bit bigger than the, the plane. And then let's scale it up like this, maybe a bit more. It's cool. Now you can see the wheels are actually still in the ground and we can fix that later. But this doesn't look bad, right? Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click on the sketch fab, select hierarchy so everything is selected. Then we can go to the rotate tool because what I'm gonna do is basically rotate it a tiny bit just to make sure that the all the wheels are on the ground. And I'm gonna rotate it on this axis as you can see. And the further we actually drag it out, the more control we have over it. So let's see, maybe something like this and we'll move it up a bit too. There we go, that's one. Then go to the move tool, let's move this up a bit. And this doesn't have to be perfect. We won't really see it anyway. Just don't want the wheels to be fully in the ground clipping. Now, maybe there's better ways to do this. Do let me know in the comments. Now, this already looks cool, but I also want a grid on this floor. Now, in my opinion, the easiest is to just duplicate this plane. So let's just select this plane. I'm just gonna press Command C, Command V, or Control C, Control V on Windows. And then I'm gonna drag it up a tiny bit, maybe something like this. And I'm gonna scale it down here on the right side maybe something like this. It's clipping a bit. I didn't properly move it up. We can also just type it here, 0.1. So it's a bit further like floating above this other plane. <laughs> this might be a bit confusing using the word plane and using the word plane. I'm gonna scale it down also a bit on the other axis, on the Y axis, maybe to something like this. That already looks cool. Great. I also want to put a texture on this. I don't like the default material. And to check your textures, we can go to the shading tab, or you can also go in the top and change your viewport shading. I'm just going to go to shading because it's a bit easier to work with. Let's zoom out a bit. And now you can already see that the plane already has a really cool texture. And look at those engines. Oh, that also looks cool, right? Cool flag on it. Yeah, looks amazing. I'm going to first put a texture on the basically the bigger plane. So just select that one and go to the material tab, or you can just press here on new. Now you have a base color and we can actually make that a bit more white, for example. We can also make it more metallic. Actually, I'm gonna keep it quite simple. Just white should be fine. Then I'm gonna click on the other one and I'm gonna press new again. Now we're gonna do a bit of a different thing. I'm gonna click here and then do shift A, the A for add, and then I'm gonna add a brick texture. So we can just click and click again. Now link the color up with the base color. So we have this beautiful brick texture. Now we have to change a couple of values here. I'm gonna set the bias to one, the brick width to one and the row height to one. And then the offset we set to zero. And we're already getting a grid here. Now I'm gonna change the color 
of the second color to white. And now we can actually scale this down a bit, something like this. It would be nice if we can align it a bit and change the mortar color to like a grayish. Now we can actually change the grid size by changing the mortar size, but I think this looks pretty good. Maybe I'm gonna turn it down a tiny bit, maybe to one five. That looks really dope. Now let's go back to our layout, make sure to save and I'm gonna change it to viewport shading. Now I actually have a light here. I'm gonna remove that by clicking on it and deleting it by pressing X. And now to light the scene, we can do multiple things. We can or have like a huge softbox. We can also just have a sunlight. To add a sunlight, we can just go to add light and then sun, we'll add a sunlight. Can go into the data properties. Now to really see what we're doing, we need to change to the viewport shading tab. As you can see, this will really change the scene. Now it's quite harsh, the shadow, and that can actually work. We can also change the color of this a bit, but I want it to be a bit softer. So I'm just gonna increase the angle a bit to maybe like 50 degrees, which just casts like a nice soft shadow. Now we're already getting somewhere. Now we have two cameras in our scene at the moment. We can actually go to view, align view, align active camera to view. Now I'm quickly gonna go to my render settings. And I said this before, ideally you want to render with cycles, but if your computer can't handle that, then EV is also nice. Just make sure the ray tracing is on. You can actually decrease the samples to even 32. And then when you hit F12, it will give a quick render. And as you can see, this rendered really quickly. One second and 33 milliseconds. Let's click that away. I'm gonna press zero on my numpad to get out of the camera view. You can also go to view and then viewpoint and then click on camera to go out of the camera view. I actually want to make a certain part of this wing invisible. And that's to basically highlight this effect. And the thing is with some objects, this is really easy. Sometimes the objects are already separated. So you can just select the right elements, put a certain material on it, and then there you go. But this one is actually a bit harder. So it's a good example. Because with this object, this is actually not nicely separated. For example, these wings are all together. So uh, we could put a material on this part, but it will also be on this part and it will also be on this top part. So what we're gonna do is basically just select the left wing by going into our model we can do that by right clicking on our model select hierarchy so this will select the whole object and we can do that by just clicking here on the object and then i'm just going to hold shift and select a few more until we're sure that we have the whole wing selected now i might do the engines too i'm not sure yet i think this actually should work something like this now let's go to the top left and change our object mode to edit mode as you can see this will select a lot of the parts that we actually want to select except i don't want the whole tail and not the whole right wing and not the whole tip so i'm just gonna go to view and then viewpoint top and it's actually nicely aligned, as you can see. This will also get rid of the perspective. And now I can just literally select and drag this out. And this object is actually quite easy because it's quite straight, as you can see. And this will select the left wing. Now in this mode, it won't select what's below it because you can't see through this object. And I actually want that. I'm gonna change the viewport shading to the mesh or the wireframe. So we can click on that. And then I'm just gonna do this again, select it, something like this. And again, this doesn't have to be perfect, but as you can see, it's somewhat the left wing. Now I'm gonna go to shading and we can actually drag around this object. As you can see, it will just select the left wing. And if we now open the Sketchfab model, open the root, open the GLTF, open the fuselage, then you can see a couple of objects here selected. And that's actually great because we can use this now. So I'm just gonna select one. It doesn't really matter which one. You can uh, turn this off and on to see uh, what it does. I think this is the biggest part. So I'm just gonna select object five for now. I'm gonna add a new material press add a new material now this is perfect i'm gonna just move this a bit hit shift a and then type in transparent bsdf again gonna hit shift a and i'm gonna add a mix shader let's drop that between here you can actually click on this line and it will already connect this one and then let's connect this bsdf with the other shader point now as you can see here on the right you can see this vector so this is the nice thing we can now actually animate this and it might be a bit hard to see since we still have the selection active but if we now click on assign and let's zoom in a bit hold shift and hit the middle mouse button to zoom in even more and let's set this factor really high and then as you can see it will be transparent 
really, really cool. Now it won't be applied to the full wing and that's because we're just applying this now to object five. And before I'm gonna copy it over to the other ones, I'm actually just gonna go to layout, go to material, then let's find our object again. And as you can see, we have our factor here and we can animate it. We can set a keyframe here. Uh, so I'm gonna set it to zero first and let's make sure this keyframe is set. Go a bit further, for example, 100 frames in, and then we can actually increase this to maybe almost fully transparent, something like this. Let's set a keyframe, perfect. Now we can also rename this to transparent. <laughs> there we go. Again, make sure that you clicked on, on a sign. Now select the other objects, which are the other parts of the plane. So we can just select them here, holding command or control on Windows. Make sure you click on object five as the last one, because there is our material. And then we can click on this arrow, copy material to select it, and this will paste it to the other ones. Now, the only thing we have to do is make sure that these are also assigned. So click on it, assign, assign, and assign. So if we now go out of this and we actually go to the viewport shading again, let's go around this and let's zoom in a bit and let's change our edit mode to object mode so we can see our full render again. We can already see this transparency. I think it looks so awesome. Now we already have a camera, so we can just click on the camera, press zero on the numpad and go to the object. And then we can make a smooth animation. And I think it's always cool to just set a keyframe at zero, going a bit further, for example, at 100 frames, moving it and setting a keyframe too. Then selecting these keyframes and then right clicking interpolation mode linear so you have this really smooth and slow camera movement and then if you add this all together you will get something like this i think it's such a cool effect i just changed the lighting and the textures a bit but you can do this with any model put the model on a cool grid add some lighting to it some slow movements and you got an awesome animation again if you want to learn even more advanced editing techniques then do join the social creator club pro link is in the description then do leave a comment of what you want to see next of course don't forget to subscribe and then i'll see you next time Bye.